One, two, three, four. Jim Bob, Jim Bob, Jim Bob, Jim Bob, Jim Bob Show. I feel like you should really be the one that makes my musery come out. You're the one that gives me the inspiration to be all that I can be, Mr. Devin. That was not in the job description, my man. Well, good news is you're doing it right now. So welcome to the Devin Bob Show. They're supposed to be like, where's the applause, Devin? God damn it. I told you to get all the AV stuff ready to go. There it is. <laughs> We got one single clapper in an audience of a million. They must think we don't. They, we're not very good at this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you guys are well aware, this is the Dev and Bob Show. We talk about video games. We talk about some of the games that we're playing, and we also have a channel highlight section. So tonight on our channel highlight section, we have a gentleman that is. I want to say he is very. Mm, what's the word I want to use here, Devin? Fill me in here. Fill it, Devin. Go. It's. The only word is chill, man. <laughs> Thank you. God, I was hoping you would say that. Oh, my God. That's so <laughs> perfect. Our timing is awesome. So he's very chill. So welcome to the show, Chill. Hey, hey how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me here. <laughs> so tonight we do have Chill. Do you still go by Chill the Beast? Because I saw you changed your name. Well, it's I'm, I'm, I'm Chill. And my Twitter handle is Chill the Beast. Go ahead and, uh, go ahead and just explain ch- the, the meaning behind Chill the Beast. Uh, well, I used to do a lot of radio production, video production, things like that in high school, uh, not high school, uh, college. And a lot of people didn't know my name because I was always in the zone when it comes to making sure productions went smoothly, went perfectly. Everything went how they were supposed to be. People started referring to me as a beast. And then they, they just, I introduced myself. I always introduced myself after a production completely after i say hey how you doing i'm chill and so they put together that i was chill the beast nice that that's more or less where it came from nice. dude i have always wanted to have an awesome nickname like that but nobody's ever given me one well see I- you got you gotta give it to yourself just give it to yourself don't don't tell anybody where it came from just tell, <laughs> give it to yourself let 10 or, 10 10 or 15 years pass and then then you could start telling people where it and came then you from. just start you just, so i could just go around and be like well see when i was in high school like in college, I was really good at putting productions together. So they called me. They called me the fixer. The fixer. Yeah. Dev Dev the fixer. fixer. Sure, yeah. That works. That works like I that. Guess. That works. So, so the fixer dev is going to be our new new handle for you. Um, but so chill. Tell us a little bit about your channel. I want to make. I want everybody to know kind of what makes you stand out from all the other people out there. Oh, sure. Well, well, I'm one of the hosts. I say one of the hosts, but typically I'm the person that you see daily. Uh, I'm the host of Alt Play. It's a YouTube channel where basically I take games and I play them to the next level. I, I increase the difficulty a little bit or I play, I, I want to say weirdly, but I play with a different set of rules than what I'm supposed to. Uh, and that goes anywhere from adding extra challenges or making a hard mode or adding gimmicks and extra rules when I play with other people or even just regular time attacks and score attacks where I try and beat my high score, do things uh, quicker than I did it last time. Uh, that That's all playing in a uh, nutshell. And basically any game can be taken. I, I like to think that any game can be taken and turned that way. So most games aren't made so that you can play by your own rules, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to find games and play them differently. I've been I've been doing that for years, not just on YouTube but in my own personal life. Basically, I got tired of the same old challenges in games, so I decided to up the ante a little bit for myself. Nice. Yeah, I, so I I got to say on your channel a lot of the stuff that I gravitate towards is not a big shocker um probably to many people that listen to the show is the Hearthstone <laughs> content. So I I gravitate towards that on your channel because I, I love Hearthstone. I love just playing it all the time. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I play for hours during the day when I can. I mean, I'm normally working during those hours. Right. But I do try and play as much and as often as possible. So w- with that said, um, you know, obviously I'm going to gravitate towards that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so, and, and you normally do just the tavern brawl stuff, right? 
Well, I've I've tried at one point doing not only Tavern Brawl, which for people who aren't familiar is a mode in which they, they change just one rule often. Or most of the time, or sometimes they'll add a scenario, give you pre-made decks and you have to play with that. But I try not to just do Tavern Brawl because it does get a little bit old sometimes. I try to do ranked, but I'm not so... I would say I'm not so entertaining when it comes to doing ranked because then I'm in my serious <laughs> mindset. I'm actually trying to to win instead of have fun that the primary goal of my channel is to always have fun in every video so when i try to win that's a completely different (laughs) goal than having fun you know Uh, for people who oh go ahead no no that was it really i was gonna say for people who don't um play video games in like a stream or youtube uh environment it's really fucking hard to play a game and like when you're trying to actually do well and be entertaining at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like I found myself when I'm doing videos where I've spent like five minutes not saying anything and had no idea because right. I was like, so I was like, hang on, I got to take care of this, <laughs> take care of this boss real quick, which doesn't right. make for fun videos. It's yeah. definitely and, a talent. And the same thing goes for like any, any form of games. Uh, I had, I just had a game night with some friends I think about a week ago, half a week ago, um, where we were playing board games. We were playing Werewolf, and uh, I told I told them, "Hey, let's 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 play Werewolf. Let's just let's just have fun." They said, "No, I want to have fun. I want to win." I was like, "Well, you're playing with like six other people. If you were to win this, you're gonna shut down the ten minute game in about two minutes. You got to you got to make it interesting." <laughs> the I'm I want to find the balance between making things. Fun and winning at the same time. Where I want to know where that line is. Absolutely, man. No, I I definitely appreciate that because you know a lot of the people we have on here, they're just they're let's players, and that's all they do is let's plays, which isn't a bad thing. And don't don't get me wrong, right. I, I'm not trying to say that if you're a let's player, you know you're dumb. But mm-hmm. I mean, there there's a difference to let's plays versus um, competitive play, super yeah. super serious winning strategy play exactly and so Mm -hmm. with with how you do it you know you're taking it to a different level whereas a lot of people are just there right they're just playing the game and as devin said it can be freaking awkward and so it Uh takes a talent to be able to do it and if you're playing it with the intention of i'm not here to play the game seriously i'm here to have fun i'm here to break the i'm here to break the game right it's going to be a whole lot different than if you're just there to be there, right? So, I got right, play, and that, man. and honestly, that's something that every I think every less player should learn that very early on. I learned that in my very first series. Um, I was playing Sonic Three and Knuckles. I've never I've played Sonic Three and beat that countless times, but I've never played Sonic Three and Knuckles. You know, you put both games together and you have what is the complete Sonic Three experience. <laughs> I learned I learned very early on: do not play games to be serious and win instead have fun <laughs> because there's let's see because i know like the first half of the game so well i flew through that with no problem i get to the second half and i'm just not talking at all i'm trying to figure out what's going on where i need to head and there, there's i think my videos were 10 minutes long at that time there's videos where i'm just eight minutes not saying anything i had to go back <laughs> i had to go back and add things in afterwards Nice. Yeah, that's, again, fix it in post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I you don't want to have to fix know, many of that, Devin. What's that? I don't want to have to fix a lot of that, Devin. <laughs> hey, I'm just one guy with a computer, man. I can't help it if it decides to fart all over the, the podcast or the, the show here. <laughs> um, you know, Chill, one thing that uh, I was noticing from looking at your videos is um, they're so laid back. Um, and I, I mean that in the best way possible. Um, so many YouTube videos that I watch and a lot of Twitch streams that I watch, um, it's, it's super fast, loud music, um, you know, people talking super fast, people talking loud and man, a lot of your videos, they're just, they're just laid back. They're relaxing. And I think that's something that, uh, I really like about, uh, your videos. Was that, was that a conscious choice on your part to make it relaxing or is that just, kind of your personality and how things came out honestly i would say that's more my personality that's more like i try to make it so that you're not watching a video so that you're sitting beside me watching me play or even 
experiencing it with me. So uh, whenever I play video games, it's it's just it's really just me. I guess I, I guess you could say I play video games to calm down to relax a little bit. So yeah, that that's that's the feeling that I want you to get from my videos. Whether I do it intentionally or not, I can't really I don't really know to be very honest. But that's that's just how I play video games. Well, if, it's if, nice. It's if, refreshing. If I'm, if I'm doing a lot of yelling or screaming, it's because very quickly something <laughs> happened and I don't know how to evaluate it. I, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> but, but very generally, I'm I'm calm and I'm cool. It, I'm I'm chill. I'll go ahead and say it. I'm chill. There you go. <laughs> nice. So, um, Devin, did you want to talk about Nintendo a little bit? Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I've been seeing is you've got a lot of Nintendo videos on your um on your channel. Um, there's uh what some Pokemon. I think uh I might mm-hmm. remember. And there was was there some some Mario Kart on there. Yeah, at, at one time I was playing Mario Kart. There's, let's see, is there Zelda? Yeah, I was playing Zelda. I think I played a lot of Zelda in my first year. Are you a Nintendo fan or were those j- just games that interested you? Let's see. Am I a Nintendo fan? Hmm. <laughs> um, I would say I'm, a, I'm an old Nintendo fan. I'm not a yeah. fan of the new Nintendo. Okay. So you go more for like the classic stuff. Um, do you keep up with the consoles at all? Kind of a, a yeah. little bit. Yeah. I'm really interested right now in the, uh, the NX, um, not so much cause I want to necessarily buy it. I got burned. I'm a big Nintendo fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I got burned really badly by the Wii U. I bought it like the Christmas it came out and I mean, I had fun with it, but it definitely was not what I was ex- expecting. Right. Um, so I'm very interested in uh, what Nintendo can do to turn things around with the NX if there is anything. It's it's interesting that you said that. What what can the NX do? What can Nintendo do with the NX to turn things around? Because I've been trying to think for like the past two weeks, what can what can they do with the NX to to fix the situation that they're in? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. That's where I'm at. The the Wii U put them in a bad spot. It's 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 absolutely the Wii U's fault if the NX has a very rocky start. Because let's see, they're about to go to what, E3? Yeah. They're about to go to they're about to go to E3, and the only thing they plan on showing is the new Zelda game, uh, which, which, which was supposed way, to be on the Wii U. Which by the way, they're only showing the Wii U version at E3, and they're not showing the NX version, which to me spells problems when when i heard that i actually face pumped like i actually put my head in my hands because this has got to be the worst move that i've heard of nintendo doing and nintendo's made some really bad moves uh, especially right. in the last what 15 years or so um just nobody is going to want to play the wii u version of it the only people who are going to play the wii u version of it are uh kids who their parents won't let them upgrade their console Mm-hmm. And because, I'm, because I'm, they they got this new system with what 10 15 games and it's it works perfectly fine. Why would you? Why exactly. Would you buy the new one? Yeah, the Wii U is only a couple years old, and you know most parents are just going to be like, "Well, you already have Mario on the Wii U, so mm-hmm. you know, sorry." I know that's how my parents were with me whenever I wanted to upgrade a console when I was a kid. Um, it's just it's so weird. Uh, I, I mean, I get that, that they feel that their, uh, their Nintendo direct videos reach their market. And I completely understand <laughs> that, but they're going to get completely just overlooked because I guarantee you that PlayStation and Xbox are going to come out with their, their 0.5 consoles. And right. again, Nintendo is going to be one step behind and they're going to be rushing to try and find, third-party support and it's not going to be there because they're just not going to be easy to port Mm -hmm. what what nintendo needs to really do is they need to take a a page out of disney's book so i'm not sure if everybody's heard it but disney infinity has been canceled so they're not going to do disney infinity disney is not going to have a game development studio but they are still going to license their games so that does not mean you will not see a star wars game it does not mean you will not see a marvel game it just means it will not be you know, produced by Disney. So Nintendo needs to go that route rather than try and make it themselves. Start selling stuff off and just start licensing your software. Um, Do you know how much more money they would make 
where they don't really have a lot of skin in the game because they're not the ones developing it. And if it fails, it's not on them. It's the game development studio. Well, right. let's let's the be only, honest. The only thing about- you got it. You got it. <laughs> The, let's be honest, though. They have so much cash reserves that they could probably put out three more failing consoles before they started really panicking. Um, I mean, the amount of cash they have on hand is just it's insane. Um, I I don't agree with that because, one, Nintendo is my favorite uh, first party uh, studio. Mm-hmm. Their their games are always fun. Um, and. I would be really upset if they sold Mario off to uh, to some other studio to make. Um, I'm not opposed to them porting their games um, over to Xbox, or PC, or or PlayStation. I think a, an alliance with PlayStation makes natural sense since they're both Japanese companies. If things get really dire for them, um, I think. And then I'll let somebody else talk. I think what I'd like to see from the NX is. Um, I just want to see a no, I want to want to see any gimmicks. Um, yes. they, there's already been talk that they're going to be switching to an x86 chipset. So that takes away the biggest hurdle that the Wii U had as far as porting the fact that they were running on a completely different chipset than the other consoles. Um, no, no developers going to want to put a separate team just to make Nintendo games. So I want to, um, if they're doing that, then the next thing I want to see is just give me a fucking controller and let me play it because that's going to entice the developers to at least just port the games that they were already making over, uh, to the, to the NX and build up an actual game library. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. Ultimately, that was the only problem with the Wii. And then that was the downfall of the Wii U. The fact that it has a completely different controller and therefore for, um, what, let's see, Call of Duty, for Call of Duty to make a game or Activision to make a Call of Duty game that was for the Wii U, they have to more or less scrap what they did for Xbox or PlayStation and build a new because this new controller doesn't work the same way that the other ones do, where it was easy just drag and drop on what you want this, the buttons to do. Right. Exactly. That, Absolutely. And I can't, I can't really say I see them licensing, let's say, Mario, Zelda, and uh, Yoshi to any other company because that would probably lead to them having to cave in on their ideals for what is a Mario game, what is a Zelda game. Not Not a lot, but just a little bit. And as we know, Nintendo does not like to bend on how they do things. How they how they've done things back in 1990 is still how they're doing things today. So, that's that's something that would take a lot I think would take them a lot to really cave in and do. Well, yeah, I agree. To be honest though, Nintendo Nintendo started to shift that way already by moving to the mobile space. So whether they license it or whether they, you know, allow for third you know for porting to the to the pc playstation 4 and xbox you know they're already moving that way in the mobile space with allowing another developer to come in and help with you know mobile games because mm-hmm. I, i'm assuming they don't ha- they don't have any you know <laughs> mobile developers on their on their staff so but um, the, catch, the catch for that though is they're not producing they're not producing your mario platformer which is what everyone expects on mobile, they're not produ- They're not making that for your phones. It's a Mario. Let me see. It's 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 going to end up being something like Mario Paint. For Pokemon, they're not producing a full scale Pokemon RPG game. They're producing uh, Pokemon Go, which is more or less what's the thing called Ingress, the Ingress app that they are, that already yes. exists. It's more or less just uh, switching it to a Pokemon template. That's it. But that, the, when when they go mobile, they're not producing the same games. They're they're doing spinoffs of their main series, which is okay because it, it helps them stay afloat. But it's not what people are looking for from any one developer specifically. It, it could be it could it could be what's Royal Clash, Clash of Clash of Kings, something like that. It, it'll end up being that. So, and I absolutely agree with you. But they're allowing their product and their you know licensing to be used. So while they're not developing it, they're still allowing for, you know, Mario, that franchise to be used by a different developer. 
So it doesn't right. have to be the platformer, it's the character. And that, to right. me, it says volumes about kind of where they're shifting and where they're moving. But I think that's enough about Nintendo. Let's go ahead and move into our next segment of Stuff You Play. Oh, Stuff I Play. Stuff I play. play. Okay. Yep, absolutely. So everything that you're playing now, um, and this is this is the segment where, you know, Chill, we want you to bring up something that you're not playing within the... Um, Within the YouTube space, but but something mm. outside or something that you just want to bring up to the audience that hey maybe this little gem of a game hasn't been seen and I want you guys to play it. So so what do you got on your list tonight, Joe? Okay, uh, one of the games I play. I've I've been playing this game for years because I'm on a vendetta to beat my grandmother's high scores in everything. Like I I, I don't think I've ever beaten any of my grandma's <laughs> scores in any video games. I, I come from a long <laughs> line of video game players we all play different types of things um my grandma loved columns whenever when i remember coming home from school in the third grade and my grandma had been sitting on columns for what looked like two or three hours just setting high scores <laughs> in in records and things like that columns is a it's one of the oldest um match three games it's basically you have three different jewels. They range in different colors, red, blue, yellow, green, things like that. And they're all in a straight line. And once you have three that are matching, they'll disappear. Uh, blocks will fall in their place. And uh, basically, you just do that until you've blocked yourself off from them appearing at the top of the screen. Uh, it's on a Sega Genesis. I probably should have led with that so that it helped to shape what it looked like. I was going to say, um, I think on Sega Genesis, I played that. I played that. That game was awesome. I love that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, my grandma was big on the arcade. She would take me She would take me for the weekends to go to the arcades. Not so that I could play the games, but so she could play the games. <laughs> and that was, that was one of the games that was always in there. She'd always be on it. Um, Pac-Man. I've actually been playing a lot of Pac-Man as well. I'm, I'm trash at Pac-Man. <laughs> I'm horrible at Pac-Man. I'm yeah, I'm, I typically I'm, I'm good at noticing patterns and following movements and predicting things like that i can't i can't put pac-man together i'm trying to beat her high scoring that as well <laughs> yeah pac-man wasn't my jam I, I could never do it so my uh, parents my parents weren't gamers um per se but they both found games that hooked them my mom got so addicted to the legend of zelda that um for some reason we just decided that the snakes in the second dungeon Mm-hmm. They dropped more five rupee jewels than anything else in the game. So while I was at school, she would go in there and and go money hunting and <laughs> you know, uh, you know, fatten up my uh, pockets a little bit. My uh, dad, I can remember being an early teenager, and he was pushing hard for us to do a uh, one of my birthday parties at an arcade because he fell in love with the Terminator Two arcade game, which was like yeah. a rail shooter. <laughs> <laughs> and he spent hours that night uh, just playing that game. And he, I never saw him play another video game except for Wii Bowling in my entire life. But that game, he he could have played that for hours. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. So, Dev, what are you playing? Um, I've not been playing too much uh, games this week. Um, I, I've continued playing Evil Land 2. Um, which I'm, I'm still just in, in love with. Um, I know a game that I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to show some patience and not just go buy on Steam right now is, uh, Total War Warhammer. Uh, it looks so good. Um, that I'm just, I've hovered over the purchase button three times today and <laughs> I've had to be like, don't do it. Don't do it. You got too many unplayed games. Nice. Yeah, I, I feel the same way about a lot of games I have. So do you have you beat Evil Land yet? Is there anything different you want to bring up this time? Um, no, just that I it continues just being really solid. Uh a really cool concept that um doesn't get old. Uh, uh you know, chill for last week I had started playing this game called Evil Land 2, and it's it's a Zelda type game. Mm-hmm. And the hook to the game is that it takes place over different periods in time. So there's like a time travel element to it. And depending on what era of time you're in, the graphics on the game change. So like 
and it's a top-down Zelda game like Link to the Past. Yeah. So you, you start out in like an 8-bit era and then you fly forward to 16-bit. And then, you know, at one point you end up back in time and you're like on a, a Game Boy green screen kind of thing. Um, eventually you get to the present day in the game and it's 3D graphics. Um, it's just it's when I first saw it, I was like, well, this could be a little gimmicky. I might get tired of this, but I don't because just when you are start wondering when you're going to change graphics again, that's when it switches it up. And it's almost like playing a new game. It's, it's really fun, really cool game. What's it called? Evo land Two. Evo land Two. It sounds interesting. I might look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks for that gift, by the way, Devin. Hey, no problem, man. Yeah, I'm going um, to get into that. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Hey, what are you playing this week? <laughs> I actually, so, so funny story. I canceled my pre-order of Doom, and you know, it kind of. I read some of the reviews, and I it was kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm not really, not really feeling it. But then I saw a, an ad from GameStop that says trade in games, and you get like 50 percent more towards the game. Doom only, right? Mm. I'm like, oh man. So I had some games I don't play anymore. So I went in and traded them in, bought Doom, played about three hours of it, and it is fucking fun, dude. <laughs> it so looks fun. The the cool thing about Doom is that it, it brings you back. So it's it's a it is an FPS for many of you who don't know it. You're mm. you're in prison on Mars, and they break you out um, to essentially, you know, help with the demon infestation and. The thing that <laughs> I like about it is your health doesn't regen. You have to pick up ammo. I mean, the, so unlike Wolfenstein, so I don't know how many have played Wolfenstein, the, the new order, um, mm. which came out, I think a couple years ago, right when the, the Xbox one came out, um, you had to go over and pick up the ammo, but with this, you don't have to, you, you just run over and you get it. It has armor. It has health packs and your health doesn't regen. And so you have to always stay on the move because if you're not on the move, you will get swarmed by all of these little imp things that come and just, you know, try and tear your face off and you have to keep moving. And so it is fast paced. It has, you know, a nice heavy metal music to the background. It has an awesome score and it's just fucking fun, dude. So if you want a mindless shoot 'em up game, this is it. <laughs> And, and I, I say that, so Call of Duty, you know, they kind of have a story. They kind of try and make you think about what you're going to do. Whereas Doom, you're just running and shooting. That's it. Mm, running guy. <laughs> Absolutely. So <laughs> so the cool thing about it, too, is you get these things called glory kills. So a glory kill, if you damage an enemy enough, they'll they'll glow yellow. So when you when they start to glow yellow, you hit your melee button, which on the Xbox One is your right stick. And then it will fucking, there was one that it rips their arm off and then it bashes their head in with their arm. It is, <laughs> it's so fun. It's quick. The glory kills don't really get annoying because if you perform them right, they drop health. So if you don't do the glory kill, you don't get the health. And, you know, it, it just, it, it's kind of that risk re reward that you need to think about. Is it? rewarding enough to run into the middle of a pack of 10 to 12 imps for mm. that health right <laughs> so man it's it's a fun game if you i don't know how much you guys are into fps but if you have you know i put it at 60 bucks i bought it at 60 bucks i think it's worth 60 bucks if i only play just the campaign i haven't delved into the multiplayer yet but the campaign itself for me it was worth it because I like mindless games like that, that, you know, you have a stressful day, you have, you know, just shit that you don't want to deal with. Just go and shoot some demons and you're good with it, right? So mm. that's what I'm playing, nothing, Devin. <laughs> nothing gets you through a bad day like killing some demons. <laughs> I haven't been big on FPSs in years. It, barring the Overwatch beta that just happened, I haven't oh played a, a, a first-person shooter for real in maybe... What years? It's 2016, and maybe 10 or 15 years. Uh, Half Half Life. Half Life was the last time I really played one <laughs> that that I enjoyed. Nice, man. Yeah, May 24th you. cannot get here quick enough. <laughs> Overwatch. I, I will be playing nothing for months, but Overwatch. Yeah. So, why have you have you checked out Battleborn? Because that's out now. You know, there. 
I didn't, I played the beta and I was not a fan of it. Uh, reason being it's very busy. Uh, if you've ever watched somebody play it, there's a billion things going on screen at the same time. Right. And it was just, I, I didn't like the art style. It was a little too, um, I don't want to say cartoony cause Overwatch is cartoony. It was just, it's a rough cartoony style. Um, it's very and bright. I, very bright, very bright to the point where it, and I'm going to sound super old. It kind of hurt my eyes playing it a little bit, especially with 15 billion numbers. Anytime you hit an enemy, you know, it tells you what damage you did. And mm -hmm. when you've got all of your teammates doing the exact same thing, it's just, it's sensory overload. <laughs> and so I, I it, it did not interest me. I, I, a lot of people are comparing Battleborn to Overwatch and I, I don't, I don't totally get the comparison, but if I were to pick out of the two, o Overwatch is by far was a lot more fun for me. Um, it, it's a little bit more of a relaxing game, and I feel like the strategy involved is is a little more advanced than um, than what you would get from Battleborn. Yeah, I've I've heard bad things about Battleborn because. And, and the only thing is that if you so it's cell shaded and, and it kind of mm. reminds you of Borderlands and I guess they made by a, the same people right yeah so it, it's the humor and the the styling of Borderlands but in a, a MOBA esque I, I don't know if I would call it a a, a pure MOBA but it's it's, it's like a MOBA um, but I mean yeah I mean I I, I can see the comparisons but I, I feel like if you don't have a team in Battleborn you are not gonna do well. Because if you get stuck with a bunch of randos and they're not working or communicating together, you're going to be screwed. Mm. I noticed that as well. <laughs> and Overwatch is more or less like that. It's not, it's not as extreme, but everyone more or less needs to know what the characters do, what, what they excel at, and where they need to be covered or else the mission's not going to, the objective's not going to be completed. But it, it's, it can, it, it, it's not extreme you can still manage like not all sick need to be on the same page four maybe you can do you can do what four so. it's team fortress 2 on steroids uh -huh. uh, absolutely so all and right. there's nothing wrong with that that's actually that sounds amazing <laughs> yeah right. i think a new team fortress 2 game is is well deserved at this point but let's go ahead and get into the topic so the topic tonight is going to be annual video game releases so you know, we have the scourge of, in the perfect example, you know, of an annual video game release is, you know, Call of Duty, uh, Madden, um, you know, all of these sports games like NHL, PGA, all that, all that crap. And then mm -hmm. now you have games like Dark Souls, you have games like, um, Assassin's Creed that are starting to go to these annual releases. Um, and, and kind of what prompted this topic for me was, the negative backlash to the Inf Infinite Warfare trailer on, on YouTube. So it is the most disliked video on YouTube today. By That's far. That's interesting. Right? And it's a Call of Duty game. So, so Call of Duty still sells millions every time. And, you know, is it finally done? So... It, what are your thoughts on annual video game releases from the same company, same gameplay, same type of game? We'll start with you, Joe. Okay. Well, first off, to answer the the very quick question that you asked, um, is are they done? <laughs> no, they're not done. They they'll be fine. They'll, they'll money wise, they'll be fine. All those dislikes are most likely people that are going to buy the game anyways. Um, annual. What are my thoughts on annual releases? Well, it's like you said, uh, they didn't start with annual releases of Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty, but it's more or less the same thing as Madden putting out a game every year or uh, 2K, NBA 2K, whatever year, putting out a game every year. Um, if If there's a need for a roster change of sorts, because that's the only that's more or less the only reason 2K would power a game every year, NFL would power a game every year. They have to they have to change the people that are in the game so that it matches the people in real life. Now you can't really do that in Call of Duty because it's it's Call of Duty. You're not really changing the roster. But if they add things that need to be added or fix things that need to be fixed and take out what needs to be removed, then th there's ultimately no problem 
with a yearly release and you don't have to if if you enjoyed Call of Duty was this one's Infinite Warfare if you enjoyed Advanced Warfare 2 then you think that Infinite Warfare is something that you don't need then you don't you don't have to you don't have to get it just just don't buy it it's it's that simple if you don't support something don't buy it but what about what do you what do you think about it fragmenting the the servers or the audience. So, so you have a game, you know, like Call of Duty, <clears throat> and, and and when it, I think when Call of Duty got really big was when Modern Warfare came out. So Call of Duty Four, mm-hmm. you know, and then you come out with I, I think it was World at War was next. Do you right. think it fragments that community? And, it, and so the people that really love, you know, the Modern Warfare and don't really want to go back to World War Two. Do you think that that's fair? Or do you think that's something that they should do every year? Or do you think it's just a money grab? Mm. I, I'm... Tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Does it fragment it? Yes, of course. It it definitely divides the audience. There's going to be people who like it and move on and people who don't like it and they want to stay with what they have. But what they could do to solve the issue of it being fragmented is keep both servers alive, I guess. Keep, um, was it Modern Warfare? Keep Modern Warfare servers active and keep, or and open up the new servers for the newest game. Same thing with the, the newest one that just came out. The only issue is that that costs money. Oh, absolutely. So, so I, I can't really say whether or not that would be fair for anybody any any party whether they like the new game they dislike the new game or the company itself that's three different parties and someone someone's going to be hurt in that case i guess i'll agree with you what what are your thoughts on that devin um three things number three things. 1 <laughs> i would bet very good money that a lot of the dislikes for the infinite warfare video were the fact that the modern warfare remake is not being sold separately um, I know that that really kind of ticked me off. Um, I have not bought a Call of Duty game since Black Ops 2. I used to play them religiously. Uh, all my friends played them. It was the last time, last game that I really played where I had got together with my friends like on a Saturday night and we were just going to run Call of Duty. Um, I was really upset to find out that they it almost felt like they knew that people weren't going to be interested in infinite warfare. So let's, let's put the golden nugget inside this ball of shit and everybody's just going to have to deal with it. Um, that's, that's number one. Um, number two, the, the opposite of the argument is the battlefield one trailer that people lost their minds over. Um, I, I don't have personally have a problem with yearly releases, um, if the market dictates it, uh, I'm really excited about Battlefield One. World War One is my my favorite. You know, I hate to say my favorite war, but it was a really cool period for warfare, and I think it can it would be really fresh. The problem with Call of Duty is that they have gone completely to the Halo side of things. They don't have anything that differentiates them from any other space type shooter um, like Destiny or or Halo or something like that. Um, and I feel like the market will tell the companies when it's time to, to ramp down the annual releases. The best example of that is, uh, Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed. They pumped those out for how many years? And when the most recent one, was it Unity? Was that the name of it? No, it was Syndicate. Syndicate. When it didn't sell well, Everybody got the memo there and they they were like, OK, listen, we're going to take a break from Assassin's Creed games for a while and let the market kind of cool down. And that's that's the way it should be. You know, if you're making money off of selling your games, who am I to say whether you're doing a disservice or not? You know, you 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 have a responsibility to make a game that people will buy, you know, to keep your shareholders and everything happy and. EA does it, you know, people buy Madden every single year for a roster update. People buy, people buy the Call of Duties just because they know that their friends are going to buy the, the call, the new Call of Duty and they're going to have to play on those. So I, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, personally, I don't like 
any of the annual releases other than maybe the Souls games. Um, Souls slash Bloodborne, since that seems to be, like you said, the way they're going. Um, but it it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, they besides there's uh, and on the other side of that too there's still a a pretty hefty group of modern warfare players if i remember right like a legacy servers over pc yep yeah i think that's the only one that that they still stay there for and i agree with you guys i think if the market dictates it then sure be my guest but it, when every game thinks that they can do that money grab it kind of gets old after a while and mm-hmm. the the fact that you know Dark Souls is doing it. So Dark Souls 3 doesn't play that differently than Dark Souls 2 or Bloodborne. You know, sure, it has a different landscape. Sure, it has a different, you know, setting. But it's still pretty much the same game. And, you know, it, it, to me, is a little, I don't want to say a a slap in the face, but it's, you know, kind of, kind of is that they're just kind of rehashing the same game on the same engine, you know? Yeah. And I can see that. Um, my argument against that would be that the dark soul, the from software games are unlike any other game in the market. So they currently, they're the only ones producing that type of super hard third person, you know, dodge and parry kind of counterattack game with giant bosses um nobody else is doing that so they're i don't for some reason i just don't personally have a problem with it i i've enjoyed all of the from software games that i've played which bloodborne was my first and um i'm i want to get dark souls 3 when it goes uh i'm gonna wait for it to go on sale but when i do i'm gonna play the shit out of it um (laughs) and I don't have a problem with that because they are creating something that is not out there on the market. You know, Ubisoft, Watch Dogs, Far Cry, uh, Assassin's Creed, they're all basically sandbox games with little twists on them. They've they've got three franchises that they produce on a pretty much yearly basis or getting close to yearly basis. And they're all they all feel the same. Call of Duty is, of course. They're in a market that's just flush. There are so many first person shooters that they're not going to stand out. And so for me, they're maybe uh, more offensive uh, than what From Software is doing. But like I said, at the end of the day, it it, it doesn't it doesn't really bother me. I just won't play them if if I've got a problem with them. Like I haven't played in Assassin's Creed since uh, the second one. Mm -hmm. Um I I did play Far Cry 4 and I enjoyed it but not enough to to come back for Primal or anything. Yep, that that's a good example as well, Far Cry. <laughs> but I think that's going to do it for us. I do want to say thank you again Chill for being a part of the show. We had a great time and everybody listening, be sure to check out his channel if you can't find it. The description is or the channel's in the description as well as it will be in an annotation when his logo pops up. So thank you again, Joe. You are awesome. No problem. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, man. And then be sure, everybody else, be sure to check out check out some of the new series we have. We have Retro Turds that Devin's going to be starting. starting um, let me go back to my schedule. Starting Tuesday of next week, or this week if you're listening to it. Be sure to check out the Stink Flicks. We're tr- finally bringing that back. And we're also going to split that day, so that's going to come out on a Friday, with a new series called Full Nelson. So the Full Nelson, well, you'll just have to wait to find out for that one. Also, be sure to check out some of the Hearthstone videos. Um, I'm, I'm focusing strictly on Arena, and it's going to be a fun twist to that. And be sure to check out the channel update if you want a little bit more info on that. And check out our last guest in gaming, who was here last week. Anything else, Mr. Devin? Not for this week. Have fun, guys. Look, for, uh, Let us know what you think of the videos. Uh, make sure you leave some comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share with all your friends. And just get get involved. Let's, let's have a dialogue about our crappy channel. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's going to do it. Thank you all. 
Hey everybody, this is Devin. And this is Bob. We want to thank you for watching the video. If you like what you watch, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Be sure to check out some of our other videos that are appearing on your screen as we speak.